Hello to anyone who happens upon this message. I send my love to you. I pray this reaches the right ears. This is my abortion story. It was 13 years ago. I'd been feeling so nauseous and exhausted for about a month. But honestly, I didn't think I could possibly be pregnant. And that's a warning, by the way, for any woman listening to this. If you think you can't get pregnant right after your period ends that month, you absolutely can. And that's how I got pregnant. And when I researched afterwards, I discovered this has also happened to many other women suddenly finding themselves expecting too. So do be careful. I just thought I had a virus or something. The doctor was going to have me tested for Lyme's disease. But then he asked if I could be pregnant. And I answered that although it was technically possible, that I was in a relationship at the time and was sexually active, but I highly doubted it. I bought a pregnancy test, really to just eliminate being pregnant from the list, so I can go back to the doctor and be like, see, told you I'm not pregnant. Now please give me some more tests and find out what the heck is wrong with me. Imagine my shock and disbelief then as I sat on my bathroom floor watching those two lines show up on the test, confirming that I was indeed pregnant. I literally could not believe it. I sat there in complete shock. It didn't feel real, but it was. I'd always said I didn't want children. I'd always said if I ever got pregnant, I wouldn't keep it. Don't get me wrong, I love children. I'm good with kids. And they always seem to really like me. I just never wanted to actually have one of my own. I'm not sure why. It was just something that I never desired. I didn't feel like the right time. My mental health wasn't good at the time. I was quite depressed. I didn't have much money. I just felt way overwhelming. I knew my boyfriend didn't want children either. So when I called to tell him I was pregnant, it just seemed the natural obvious choice that we wouldn't keep it. And so we decided that while it was a really sad and terrible thing, as neither of us wanted children and didn't feel the right time, that I would have an abortion. I went back to the doctor and told her I was pregnant. I made it clear I didn't want the child, so she immediately went ahead and booked an appointment with me to the hospital for an abortion for the next week, or termination of pregnancy as they put it, to make it sound less gruesome, I guess. I noticed that no one at the doctor's surgery or the hospital ever used the word abortion. I felt in a daze, just going through the motions. No one at the hospital spoke to me about other options like adoption. It was never mentioned. I agonized over it that whole week. It's not a decision I made lightly at all. I know it sounds ridiculous to say considering what I did, but I honestly did feel love for the baby growing inside of me. I just really didn't feel ready to have children, and neither did my partner. I cried every day leading up to it. It just all happened so fast. I went to the hospital. They gave me an ultrasound scan to make sure I actually was pregnant. And I thought I couldn't possibly be more than four weeks. So I about fainted when she said, you look about nine weeks along. Is that around what you're thinking? Yes, no, no, it wasn't. That made me feel worse than I already did. I remember reading online that the heart starts beating around five weeks and really, really wanted to have the procedure done before its heart was formed. Because then it wasn't really truly alive. I reasoned to myself, obviously, I was wrong. Life starts at the moment of conception. But now she's telling me I'm more than two months pregnant. Oh no. I remember the nurse being shocked when doing the scan, I asked her to turn the screen around so I could see. She said, no one asks to see. No one wants to see. Was I really sure? I said, yes. She said, I might regret looking, but I said I wouldn't. I already thought long and hard about it and asked myself, would I regret more in the future, looking at the ultrasound scan or not looking? I decided I would regret it more if I didn't look. I knew I wasn't planning on having the children in the future, so I'd likely never have this opportunity again, so I wanted to look. I know it would probably sound really strange to the most people, but even though I decided I couldn't keep the baby at the time, I truly did still feel love for him or her. I wanted to see them on the screen. The nurse could see how determined I was, so she let me look. I sat there still a bit of a daze and watched the screen, not knowing how I would feel. I'd freak out, scream, cry, or what. I felt really emotional, 
My eyes watered a little, but I held it together. I suppose it sounds strange, but in the moment I was really fascinated and interested in seeing my baby on the screen. I was really surprised how much was moving and wiggling around, and by the fact that I had clearly visible fingers and toes. They tell you just a clump of cells. Don't believe them. I'm here to tell you from personal experience that it's a complete and utter lie. It was tiny and obviously not fully formed, but it had a head, arms, legs, fingers, toes, and a beating heart. I remember. I remember there was briefly a little pink glow, like a soft pink light coming from one part of the body. That made me feel really emotional. I don't know what the light was. It was the heart. Part of its soul, or something else. But I always remember that little soft pink glow light. I nicknamed the baby Little Pink because of it. I always felt like it was a girl, but I'm not sure. I asked her to print out the scan to keep it again, and the nurse was very surprised and confused, but she granted my request. I remember being at home, staring at the screen picture, crying my eyes out. I knew it was a terrible thing to do. But I was just in a daze. It all happened so fast. Well, if you don't want children, okay, we'll book you in the next week to take care of that, and then all these doctors and nurses are acting like it's perfectly fine, no more thing to do. The only people who knew about it were my boyfriend, and my mother, and they were both telling me it's sad, but it's for the best. I'm not blaming them all. It was 100% still my decision. But well, when your loved ones are telling you it's for the best, and all medical professionals are acting like it's fine and perfectly normal, and booking appointments for you. It does make it harder to change your mind. For the rest of the week until the procedure, I cried a lot. I felt so guilty, and just so you know, the guilt never goes away. I still feel it now, over a decade later, and if anything, I feel even more guilt now, because back then I wasn't a Christian. I believed in God, but had never accepted Jesus. I didn't realize abortion is the same as a satanic sacrifice. But think about it. Back in biblical times, the devil managed to convince so many people to sacrifice their children to a false demonic god like Moloch and Baal. Now he convinces people to willingly sacrifice their children themselves before they're even born. The satanic temples are even creating their own abortion clinics now, and I've heard from a former satanic high priest that satanic priests sometimes even perform the abortions at abortion clinics. There's a video I saw years later that confirmed this of an abortionist outside a clinic talking to a Christian man, and a demon starts talking out of the abortionist, saying that he loves to kill babies. It was shocking. So I fully believe that while not all abortionists are Satanists performing rituals, some of them definitely are. I also believed in reincarnation at the time, so I thought the baby could just come back and be reborn to another family who wanted children, or come back to me later if I decided if I wanted children. I now know reincarnation is not true. We actually have a couple of messages from Jesus about that topic. Reincarnation is definitely not true, so please don't fall for that lie. I remember being so confused and quite angry with God. I couldn't understand why He would send me a child when I didn't want one. When I'd always said if I got pregnant that I wouldn't keep it. I still don't fully understand if I'm being completely honest, but I know He had His reasons. I also know now. That it was a precious gift from heaven, as all children are meant to be. I know now that I kept that baby. The Lord would have been with me; He would have helped me. But at the time, I didn't know that. I didn't know Him then, and I just felt too overwhelmed and afraid. In the days before the abortion, I prayed that God would take the baby back to heaven. That I would just have a miscarriage, so I wouldn't have to go through with this horrible procedure. That it would just go naturally. But alas, that didn't happen. So instead, I prayed to God and asked Him to take the baby soul back to heaven before the procedure started. I begged Him not to let the baby feel any pain. They tell you it doesn't feel anything. How could it not? It's literally ripped apart limb from limb, and has its head crushed. I know it's utterly horrific to think about, but that is what happens. So I begged God to take the baby soul back to heaven before the operation began. The night before, I fell asleep with my hands on my womb, crying. I remember speaking to the baby, hoping he could hear me and could understand me. I'm so sorry. I just don't feel like I can keep you right now. You just go back to heaven, and they can come back to earth another time. 
Please forgive me. I love you. I barely slept. The next day, I was just on autopilot. I got to the hospital and had to wait in the room for hours. My boyfriend was with me, but in the end, I asked him to leave because I just wanted to be alone. I believe God honored my prayer request because something, or rather someone, was in the room with me. I remember I suddenly started feeling a sense of peace and calm. I know it makes no sense because I was feeling the opposite of that just moments before. I think now it's either an angel or Jesus himself there to bring the baby soul back to heaven. I didn't see anyone, but I felt a calming presence right until they put me to sleep. I woke up to a nurse saying my name. As I came into the recovery room with my eyes closed till half asleep, I remember my first thought, oh wow, my throat really hurts. Why does my throat hurt so much? Then I realized as the nurse started to pull a tube up my throat and out of my mouth. As I opened my eyes, I told her my throat really hurts. Then I suddenly remembered everything. I grabbed hold of the nurse's arm and asked, is it over? She said yes. Then I burst into tears and I cried every day for almost an entire year. Every time I would see a baby or young child in my life, I would have to fight back tears. Every time I saw a baby on a TV show, I'd feel so guilty and upset. Even a dapper commercial would make me cry. As I said before, I always felt like I was pregnant with a girl. And even now, 13 years later, when I see a mother or father with a little girl playing with them or holding them, I tear up and feel a sense of loss. I always wonder what they would have looked like, what their personality would have been like, what fun we would have playing together, what little cute and funny things they would say that would make me laugh. Would she have a sense of humor? My eyes? What would her likes and dislikes be? I wonder what her favorite color would have been. I really do feel a sense of loss. Also, it absolutely terrifies me to think that if I had died before I stepped to Jesus, I would have been guilty of the sin of murder and could have sent myself to hell for eternity because of it. I might not have been the one who physically did it, but I was responsible. I asked him to do. I signed the consent form. The baby would still be alive if it wasn't for me, so I am responsible. I'm glad I have Jesus now and that I was able to repent. It doesn't take away the guilt or sense of loss, though. So if you're considering abortion, take it from someone who has had one. You will feel guilty forever, and you'll feel a sense of loss forever, and you'll never know how your circumstances might change. At the time, I had a big group of friends, a relationship, a good social life. Where am I in my life now? The group of friends are gone. That relationship is gone. And I don't have a good social life anymore. I'm quite isolated and alone most of the time. And I can't help but think sometimes that it would been quite nice to have my child here, to have a little companion with me. And that makes me cry. I light a candle for my baby every year on the anniversary of their death. I sit and talk to them and weep and apologize all over again. I've done this every year for 13 years. And I will continue to do it every year until God calls me home. I can finally hold my child in my arms, looking to their eyes, and apologize to them again face to face. I love you. I miss you, little pink. Until we meet again, please forgive me. Choose life. From Anonymous. <laughs>